Alright boys, the last game of Endisan, the first game of Indica in the group stage for the World Championship 2020 for cash price of $500. The matchup is Elves against Dwarves on the beautiful map. No one knows about this map. It's, you know, the name is Forts of Eisen. Yeah, I, you heard it for the first time, I know. I know, guys. Don't get too excited. On the right side, we have the red Dwarven player Anisan against the green Elvin player Indica, aka uh, Liam, with his name. You know, he was actually signing up with the Liam name, just if you are curious why we don't see Indica in the bracket, because he is normally using the uh, name uh, Liam. Two Malon trees coming up for Liam on the left side, two mineshafts for the Dwarven player Anisan. Barax is coming up. And we know the fact that Andy likes to make uh, three mineshafts around the fortress. And, you know, waits a little bit before he's gonna go for the first push. Andy is always pushing uh, with multiple units at once. So he's making one pikeman and then waiting even for the third guardian. So he's gonna go for a push with four units potentially. Which is gonna be very hard to defend. But Indica on the other side, he likes to make archers almost exclusively. So I'm assuming he's gonna go for the pikeman and then gonna spam Lorian archers all the time. And if you have enough archers, you can actually burst down many of those units before they can reach to your Malon tree. You might still lose one, maybe even two Malon trees, but then you will be potentially having a army advantage at your side. Okay, um, and yeah, I would even say, and you are playing elves against dwarves, you need to play definitely a bit defensively. You need to be ready for the first push to defend yourself. Again, Andy was building three mineshafts around the fortress, not two, because that's normally happening all the time. They build two mineshafts and building the third one offensively. He's gonna build one more here and one more here potentially and gonna go for the creep first. The first units, ah, I take it, he has already Guardian inside and going for the second one. So I think he's not gonna go for the creep, he's gonna go for a push. In the meantime, Indica is creeping the work layer at the left side of the river and going for the second barracks. Archers are out, a Lorian warriors now, and then archers second. Okay. Um, and Andy keeps spamming those guardians for now. Even a third one is on the way. I think he's gonna go for a push with three, potentially even four guardians at once. Let's see how effective the first push is gonna be. Uh, Indica on the other side was able to creep, that's nice, he got some experience, he has now a level 2 pikeman unit, has some treasure plus power points, almost a 1 power point you get from the war creep by the way, double archer range, uh, double barracks I mean double archers, gonna go for offensive creep, might be able to see this mineshaft here, yes he was able to see the mineshaft, which will be taken down first, but it's quite offensive playstyle from the Alvin play Indica, but it looks like the Dwarven player Andy Sun doesn't, doesn't want to give up this mineshaft for free. He might be forced to defend himself first. And again, the more time Andy gives to Indica, the more elves he has to deal later on. And I think just being around this area and pressuring Andy Sun a lot, you know, forcing him to play defensively, is already a great move from the Alvin player Indica. The mineshaft is on the field and I think he's gonna use this one to go for an attack. Going for the forge works second. So Andy is just gonna wait now. He knows going for a push now might not be as effective as he wants. So for now he's playing just defensively. You know, <laughs> ringing around the rosy kind of thing. Rallying call was used. They're gonna go in into the mineshaft and gonna exit the mineshaft from this I would say. Yeah, that's gonna be the case. So since the rallying call was used off screen, I would say maybe the Elven player wasn't able to see that. Two guardians only. I, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Look the, look the archers here from Indica. Four battalions on the field. And yeah, the guardians are tanky, but you can't be that tanky to face tank four archers at the same time. Still dealing a lot of damage. Almost one-shotting those archers. But there are just too many to deal with. But Battle Dragon is gonna change everything, by the way. Because Indica for now has zero pikemen around this area to defend. He has one pikeman only in his, you know, whole army. 
And even in a bad situation like this, Andy San was still able to take down one of the Malone trees from the Alvin player Indica in the game number one. He was also able to build another mineshaft at the top side, has protected every single mineshaft half himself, and has now a battle wagon joining the fight. Potentially with the banner carrier upgrade, because until he has enough power points for the mist, he can't deny the leadership, nullify the leadership from the battle wagon. Okay, rallying call advantage will be used, but that's what I mean. Look, this absolutely fiesta right now. No pikemen. That's so risky. But nice micro, actually. Oh, never mind. And Nissan getting into the back line, trampling down those archers, dealing tons of damage, and will be still able to get away. Almost level 2, by the way, from this trample. Uh, Robato, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. This mineshaft is gonna be taken down next, boys. Battle Wagon was able to get away, but that's not gonna be the last Battle Wagon he will get on the field. The second one is already joining the battlefield. And... Yes, the mineshaft has been taken down, but the Wagon is coming back. He's gonna go for the Man of Dale upgrades, by the way. We know they are very effective. Um, and he's gonna play a bit more defensively with that again. No defense at all around this area. And, you know, he needs to definitely make some more pikemen. Ideally, if you have like 5 battalions of archers, you want to make sure that you have at least 3 battalions of pikemen. So you can put them and place them in the middle of your archer army. This way he can trample you down. Uh, Mano211, uh, uh, 211. thank you so much for the follow as well. Welcome to the stream and thank you. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay, buddy. Okay, double barrack still for Indica. He didn't go for the upgrade just yet. The Wagon is doing a great job, and with, because of the Man of Zeal upgrade on it, he can shoot from a safe distance all the time. The Archers from Lorien are not able to deal too much damage, so he doesn't need to be too much worried right now. But the Mirkwoods, they're gonna change that. Andy has to be careful, but Andy is a mean and one-trick Dwarven player, by the way, boys. He knows everything about the Dwarven faction, he knows every single matchup against Elves, Goblins, Engma, Mordor, Goblin, you know, uh, Engma, I told Engma once already, but you know what I mean. He knows every single matchup, he knows what he needs to do. 500 command points available for Indica, 6 power points almost collected. Again, 600 command points for Indy-san. Double battle wagon, he's gonna go for the Man of Teal also on this second one. Uh, almost 5 power points, I think he's gonna go for the heal. He, he might potentially has to go for the heal, just to have some uh, sustain for the battle wagons later on. Um, but Indica is doing a great job defending himself for now. Again, Andy will definitely keep spamming, spamming more and more battle wagons. Now going for the second Hall of Warriors. Um, we might later on see... I'm actually wonder, wondering, guys, and I'm really curious about how effective the Lindon Horse Archer units from the stable level 2 from the Elven faction are gonna be against the battle wagons. That's, I, that's what I would like to know now. But you can see, uh, Men of Tail are destroying that army here. I mean, 1v1 situation. But Haldir is gonna change something here. Haldir is gonna be permanently shooting down those battle wagons. Eventually gonna force them back. And force them to use the heal for the sustain. Another attack is happening. This area is unprotected fully. Rallying Cove will be used from Andy Sun. He's gonna split the army as he should. And he will potentially be able to take down this level 2 Malone 3 and this level 1. You know, uncontested pretty much. And during all this time, Andy San himself is being untouched, ladies and gentlemen. The Malone 3 level 2 has been taken down. This is also gonna... Nah, this one is gonna be saved luckily. But it's gonna be very low. Okay, Guardians are coming here. They are very tanky, and another level 2 Malone tree is going to be taken down. It's actually huge. Mirkus are coming now from the level 2 barracks. We know they are very strong. Battle Wagons, they don't have any protection. I mean, they have one pikeman, but they need to be around the Mirkfoods. If the Battle Wagons can see them, and they do see them, holy moly, that's going to be Fiesta now. Move with your, with your Mirkfoods. Look, they are being killed as the Wagons are moving through them. Oil Bottle will be used. That's the last level 2 Malone tree. Indica has left and he's running through the fire. That's something you don't want to do. You will, take, you will take damage over time and you will potentially lose every single unit. That was a great push from, Indica, from Andy San. 
He's gonna lose this level to Malone Tree as well. Nine power points com collected almost. He has a tower in the middle of the map. He has 450 command points available only now. And that means his command points kept. And the sun isn't done yet. He has so many units inside this mineshaft. And he's gonna be able to take down this one, which is already very low. On the other side, Andy has uh, 4 power points collected after heal and rallying call. And has 775 command points available. That is impressive in the game number 1. He has such a big advantage right now. And he doesn't need to be worried about this army. Imagine him getting 10 power points soon and using Undermine right there. Oh, that's a, that's a bad fight to take. I don't know what Indica is planning to do. Oh, nice trample! Holy moly! Did you guys see that? It was absolutely fiesta! He killed so many units. He lost almost all the archers within seconds. And again, this army isn't made to siege. They're gonna need ages to take down a single mineshaft level 2. And during all this time, his side of the map is unprotected. And yeah, he's gonna lose everything around this area. Still not gonna be able to take down this mineshaft. If Andy Sun wanna be rude, he could just invest 5 power points into the uh, rebuild, but he doesn't have to. And Hyaldir will also be taken down. There is no way he can escape that. Heal will be even used. That's gonna delay his mist. Uh, which could be very great in a situation like this. Actually, maybe Haldir will be able to get away. Yes, that's gonna be the case. But he lost everything, boys. Everything. Beside Haldir and he was forced to use heal. And during all this time, he doesn't see this mineshaft. He needs to ask himself, where are those units coming all the time uh, from? And he needs to react to that. Because Andy Sun is using now the same mineshaft for three times in a row. And the builder... From Indica is gonna be potentially taken down. The Mirkwoods are hitting like an absolute truck, we know that. This level 1 Malon tree is gonna be taken down. Lick to Commitsman at the tower. Uh, he has no arches inside of that yet. Uh, the Malon tree is gonna be the target first. Haldir is very low and he doesn't have heal ability available anymore. Mirkwoods are still demolishing the Guardians. And, you know, they are so tanky, but yet not as tanky as to tank this damage output from those Mirkwoods. And again, they don't have any protection. Rallying Cold will be used for some reason after killing every single uh, Guardian here. Indica has to now go to this side and take down this Mineshaft. If, if he wants to be ever able to push him back, King Brand is almost level 4. 9 power points collected almost, by the way, from the Alvin player Indica. And the Sun went for the Hobbit Elias. 850 command points, ladies and gentlemen. Gonna go for the Forge Works level 3. Why? Because he can. He can go for the Flaming Shot if he wants to, make catapults. We know the Elven army, which is based on archers almost exclusively, is very vulnerable against those catapults. And those catapults from the Dwarven faction, with the Flaming Shot, they're gonna be very effective. Martin Vita, thank you so much for the follow, by the way. Welcome to the stream. We fight. Okay, boys. Let's see. I mean, this Malone tree is gonna be taken down next, I would say. The pressure is real. Um, not the best slam shot ability, but Hobbits on top of the Mirkwood Archer Battalion here, there is only one of them getting body blocked. But look, the Hobbits are actually getting one shot at here from those Mirkwoods. The damage output from them is crazy. And they were able to use the Elven Cloak, get stealthed. This Malone tree is gonna be taken down. The pressure is really in this mineshaft. Ironically, it's still on the field. It's almost level 2, boys. Almost level 2. Okay. So he's gonna go for... Uh, I mean... Is he gonna go for the Flaming Shot? Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for the follow. Till Eternity and... Impartial Mediator. Thank you, guys. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. We fight. Okay, Haldir is running for his life. Almost level 4, but there is no backup this time. Those Mirkwoods, they are still hiding with the Elven Cloak. Haldir is gonna be taken down eventually from those Hobbits or from this two Battle Wagons, which is gonna be... Oh, heal will be used just in time. The Mirkwoods are healing up over time, but again, zero protection. There is a Mirkwood Arch Archer Battalion also inside of this tower. So Indica is holding himself. Another builder has been taken down in the meantime. 10 power points collected now from Andy Sun after Hobbits heal and rallying coal. Okay. Did he went for the arrow volley? Yes, he did went for the arrow volley. 
to kill one guardian only and his uh, Valentry is gonna be taken down anyway. Torin, okay shield, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream guys. We have now Gloin on the field, level 4 already. That means Shake Foundation is available. We know that one shots almost every normal structure. And Forge works is up on the field. He's gonna go for the level 3, but the problem is look to money from the Alvin player and look to command points from the Alvin player. And just compare that now to the command points from Andy San, the dwarf player on the right side. Full command points. Level 3 Forge. Uh, le two level 1 Hall of Warriors. He has heroes on the field, not only one, but two. We have a level 4 Gloin and level 4 King Brand. And if this is not enough, he has the Mithril Male Armor purchased and the Forge Blades purchased as well. And with that being said, they're gonna hit like a truck while they're gonna be also tanky at the same time. And just a look into the minimap shows you how amazing Andy Sun was playing the early mid game, was snowballing all the time. And these mid boots are dealing so much damage. Riding call was used, but the level 1 barracks is gonna be bursted down very fast. Aldi is only level 3 still. He would need level 5 really badly. Uh, Gloin is chasing him down. He's very low and heal is on cooldown from Indica. Riding call will be used on those on this one midwood battalion he has left on the field. Uh, Aldi is running for his life. Gloin has to be careful. He's quite tanky. And... Yeah, they don't take too much damage anymore, which makes sense because they have Mif uh, Mifil Mail armor purchased. The Malon tree is gonna be taken down, the level 2 uh, forge. But, you know, he has no money. He needs to invest 1,750 for the upgrade and then 1,000 for the Silverton arrow er upgrade. That's 1,750 resources. Shake Foundation on the level 2, you have seen that. Bursting it down below 50% HP mark, which is impressive. On the other side, Barrage is gonna be used, just why not? Uh, to kill the Mirkwood Archers. That means Indica now is gonna call it GG and the first game will be won by Andy Sun after an impressive start into the best of three series. The second game is all about the Vegan Boys, this time Dwarves against Isengard. Actually, Indica is switching his faction surprisingly for me from the Alvin faction to the Isengard faction. We have seen indeed a couple of times Isengard being a very solid pick against the Dwarven faction. Let's see if Indica can make it work. We shall see, boys. We shall see. El Clasico good against evil. Indica is 1-0 behind, so if he loses that one, Andy San will be finishing his group stage with only one lose against Truckee, while winning all the other games in his group stage. Traki has perfect score so far in his group stage. He won against Andy Sun. And he won against... Uh, I can't remember anymore. I need to check the bracket. <laughs> but he is 2-0 right now. Undefeated. So even if Andy Sun wins that one. And Traki is going to win all the other games. Which are 3 left. Traki is going to be still the winner of the group stage. Uh, but it's not a big deal. Because the two best players from the group stage are able to advance. Okay, two furnaces into the Uruk pit from Indica. On the other side, I see two mineshafts, all of warriors into the third mineshaft from the Dwarven player Andy Sun. Indeed, we have seen this start from Andy Sun in almost every single series, in almost every single matchup, in almost every single map. Um, Holding edits, we have four work layers just like in the map Forts of Eisen, and two troll layers protecting those two ends just like in the map Forts of Eisen. It's kind of similar to Forts of Eisen, kind of different layout, but besides that, kind of identical. I mean, it's not bigger, it's not smaller. I would say it's almost the same map. Um, just like in the previous scheme, he's gonna start with Guardians only. Let's see, Indica is gonna start with Pikeman instead, Urukai next. Urukai are uh, very strong units in a 1v1 situation, very tanky, but also very expensive. They cost 400 each, and Guardians they cost only 300 each. And 100 cost is actually a lot early on. So for every uh, 3 Urukai Indica getting on the field, quick math, uh, Andy Sun can make 4, four Guardians, pretty much. Okay, the builder from Andy Sun is around this area, he's gonna build a mineshaft here. 
And yeah, I think the biggest mistake from Indica in the previous game on the map Forza Horizon was that he was not scouting the area as much as he should, right? Um, he was not focusing on the map control. He was actually indeed getting attacked all the time from the same mineshaft. Uh, hopefully in this game he will be paying a little bit more attention uh, to the possible mineshafts around his own uh, around around his own side. But again, you know, Isengard can always go for the Keithbats upgrade on the Fortress, which will be definitely very useful in this matchup on this map. Because with the Keithbats around, you will be able to see so much. Again, very useful against Goblins and Dwarves. He was able to creep the Troll and in is gonna be very effective on the Isengard faction as well. Why? Because you can make those Black Oryx, they cost less than Urukai, are almost as powerful as Urukai. Very effective and very strong units. Committing to that mineshaft, nice clumping. And he will actually be able to take it down. Very nice clumping here from Indica. I really like it. Many guardians are not able to attack, but the builder was able to exit the mineshaft. And I think he's gonna just build another one. Unfortunately for Indica, he's gonna lose those level 2 pikemen. But I think it's gonna be kind of worth it uh, to take down the mineshaft. He was having a lot of power points from that. 1.5 power points, 350 command points against. 450 command points and nearly 1 power points collected from any sun. Urukai are retreating, it's a 2v1 situation, it's a fight you don't want to take. Warp pit is on the field, warp packs are on their way. Uh, warp riders later on can be also very great. Uh, and the forge works is coming up this time from any sun much much earlier than in the previous game against the Elvin faction. Okay, Warchant was used and Rallying Call was used. Now we have Black Oryx and Urukai against two battalions of Guardians. Let's see, actually, I'm curious. I think Isengard should win this game, technic uh, win this fight, technically. Urukai are very uh, tanky, hold ground, stance plus shield ball formation. Maybe it's a mistake from him. Using uh, Charge Attack will be used, uh, taking down the Urukai first. Because he was using smartly the aggressive stance with those Black Oryx. But Guardians are very strong units. Holy moly, guys, they don't die. <laughs> they just don't want to die. Okay, another attack is happening from Andy Sun. Work packs are using the whole ability. Uh, but two against one, you don't have a chance. They are not as effective as Work Riders because you can't trample down the enemy units. Crossbow men are here to defend. But this furnace is going to be taken down regardless. More Black Orcs are coming, which is the way to go. He's trying to disengage with this battalion, but I think he's not going to make it? Question mark? Oh, he's gonna make it! Oh no, just in the last possible second! Would be amazing if you can save this level 2 battalion. Because they will be recovering over time themselves, as you know. The furnace has been taken down, by, by the way, boys. Workpad is still level 1. Uh, and again, so far, Andy Sun is untouched. The first battle wagon is joining the battlefield. Guardians are protecting this mineshaft here. There is another one at the bot side. Now for a while actually, and again Indica has to pay a bit more attention about the map control. Um, again, the upgrade on the fortress with those cave pads, very effective. Bagon is joining the fight and crossbow man, they gonna be taken down within seconds because they don't have any protection just like in the last game. The trample, the splash, they are gone. Um, man of Deal upgrade just like in the previous game. Against the Elven faction from Indica. He's being he's gonna get attacked now from this area as well. I gotta give credits to Andy Sun in this series. He's actually playing very macro based while being micro based also with those battle wagons, making sure to keep them all alive. Okay, getting back on the field with Guardians and the Men of Tail upgraded battle wagon. Indica will be forced to retreat, and Indica playing very defensively. Has to make sure to make multiple pikemen to keep those crossbowmen alive. And has to a little bit focus on the other side of the map a little bit. You know, just to take down this mineshaft. He's gonna go for the Creebane. For the active debuff on the enemy units. This inn is gonna be captured now from the Dwarven player Andy Sun. He's gonna get the chance to get some Hobbits on the field. It looks like Indica wants to take the fight. Let's see how smart how smart this is gonna be. Um, I think if he can protect those crossbowmen against the wagon, they should be good to go. Uh, just face tank those guardians with your units. Creebane is gonna be very helpful as we know. Warcham was used, Riding Call was used. It looks like Andy Sun wanna take the fight. I don't know about this about the spikemen. I think they are just too scared of this battle wagon. 
Warp packs are trying to get into the backline. Oil barrel will be used. Wagon is getting damage. Does Andy Sun have heal? Yes, he does, and he will use it. Wagon is healthy. Pikemen are just in position. But more units are coming in the meantime. Guardians are still around. The Keef pads are still around as well. But the fire on the ground is damaging those crossbowmen a little, little bit. It's now gonna be gone. They are still being buffed. Uh, and the thing is, they are also getting damaged from the Man of Deal. And the Keef pads are actually gonna get killed. Luckily, during all this time, and, um, you know, Indica is not getting damaged. He has the furnaces up on the field. 550 command points against 550 command points. Power point wise, it's also very equal right now. So we can agree that this game is looking much better for the Canadian player Liam than the previous game with the Elvin faction against the Dwarf faction from Andy Sun. Wagon is getting uh, shoots down from those crossbar men. Heal is not longer available, remember. Hobbits are coming from the inn at the top right side. And Indica smartly chooses to retreat, which is the right call. Because there is a statue coming up anyway. Uh, from the Dwarven player Andy Sun. And again, this mineshaft is up on the fields now for a while. And all these mineshafts around this area are undamaged since the beginning of the game. Maybe, you know, use your work packs to go for harassment. Uh, but Indica choosing to play very defensively, ladies and gentlemen. Very defensively in this game. I think he needs something like Devastation here. And he is still like 6 power points and a little bit more away from that power point ability from the spellbook. Um, Lumber mills later on can be also very useful into the field of fire upgrade. We know Isengard has many many tools in the mid game to increase his resource income. As he also needs that. He has really expensive units like mentioned at the beginning with Urukai they cost 400 each. Pikeman they cost 400 each as well. Going for the second Uruk pit now. So every source of money income you can get is going to be very helpful for the Isengard faction. You have potentially industry, devastation. I hope he's going to go for this abilities, right? Instead of going for a, for a Wildman of Dunland summon, for example. Which can be situationally a very good summon. But I would say you get much more value of the devastation. Like Lourdes can be a great choice against the Wagons, right? You get him potentially level 5. And get the leadership for your army. Even uh, Saruman later on with fireballs, you can fireball those uh, battle wagons from a safe distance, which can be very effective as well. Lurt is already on the field, I take it back. Shooting down those wagons. He can't shoot when he's being attacked, by the way, just like in Battle for Middle Earth 1, which I like a lot. Ooh, he's running into the into the hobbits. We need to be careful here, I don't know what he's doing. Don't underestimate the, the damage of the hobbits, by the way, boys. He needs to be very careful, he's only level 1, didn't get any kind of experience just yet. Ribbon is being used once again in the war chant, and I think Andy Sun also used Rallying Call. Yes, that's being the case. Heal is gonna be used. The thing is that the crossbowmen are not dealing too much damage to those wagons. With that being said, I think the, the best thing what you need to do, or what you can do, is either get war riders on the field or heroes. More heroes like Sharku can be a great choice against them, for example, right? And also later on for your war riders from the level 2 work with potentially. And you can also trample down the Guardians. So from Sharku you would get so much value. Lourdes has to be careful. He's very low. Um, Saruman later on can be very useful. Lourdes is very low but he will be barely able to get away. Uh, these battle wagons are uh, very hard to deal with right now. The Builder is getting shot down from those Men of Deal. Indica doesn't pay attention. And he will end up losing the Builder here unfortunately. Lourdes was able to get away, but the pressure is real. And again, 835 command points for Andy Sun, ladies and gentlemen. 835. Uh, the IC Trivel uh, of these uh, Hall of Warriors, by the way. All of them are still level 1. A level 2 Forge Works. I think we're gonna get a hero on the field pretty soon. I'm assuming it's gonna be either Gloin or King Brent. Let's see. On the other side, we have 450 command points only. 8 power points. 8.5 actually. Collected from Indica. He is one and a half power points away from the possible devastation. Which might be very useful. I'm assuming he will definitely need something like Sharku. Again, why? Because there are no pikemen around. And Sharku splash damage in a clamped army like this. Is very useful and you know. You can always keep chasing down those wagons all the time. And he has now 
He actually only plays with two of them, so he didn't make that much. Makes more hobbits at the same time from the inn. This mineshaft, untouched all game long, is almost level 2 by the way. Kind of funny. And double Uruk pits. Burn is level 2. He's gonna finally go for the upgrade on the work pit. Realizes that he needs work riders, which is definitely true. Because he doesn't have any pikemen around. So you use whole ability plus the creebane and you go for a trample. I think it can be very effective. Hobbit allies offensively. Everything is on cooldown from Isengard for now. Creebane and Warchan are still on cooldown. Uh, he's gonna use whole ability with those units. Pikemen are face tanking. Not that many crossbowmen around. And Indica has to retreat. Sam is chasing down Lourdes. Who's level 2 by the way. He can go for the carnage potentially. Sam. I don't know what you're doing Sam. Sam Wise Gamji has been taken down. And 985 command points for Andy Sun. It's almost full CP. Archer range level 2. Man of Teal. I, I would say he's, he's gonna get on the field. There's so many units inside the mineshaft as well. Level 5 battle wagon ladies and gentlemen. Which is impressive. The furnace has been taken down. 10 power points collected now for Indica. I'm curious. He's gonna go for Wildsman. Okay, that's... I don't like it at all. I mean... I really don't like it. And especially now when you are using it defensively. They, you're gonna... You would be able to defend this potentially anyway. Um, and Devastation would be a much more solid choice. In my opinion at least. He's standing on fire. And we'll be losing a couple of those units. And yeah, now, now, now is the time. Go for a trample. No pikemen around. Not a, a single one of them. But you need to trample and not be stuck here. in between. Nice he one. Still will be used from any sun. You will obviously need multiple tramples to kill guardians. They are not as weak as goblins or orcs from Modo faction. They're very tanky. Um, Freebane is getting killed here, by the way, from those wagons. Nice move from Andy Sun, making sure to get rid out of this um, debuff. Level 5 wagons, by the way, boys. Level 5 and level 4. Ooh, that's Fiesta Trample right there. This wagon level 5 is MVP, but Lourdes is level 4 now. And if he gets level 5, the leadership and the damage output from those units is gonna be increased. Um, but I would still say that Sharku is gonna be a great choice. I keep repeating myself all the time, but Sharku is gonna be a great choice. Devastation would be the right call, in my opinion. And uh, Saruman could be a very great choice as well. But we know Isengard in the late game is also a very strong and solid faction. If you actually can get to that point, and you get upgrade on, uh, upgrades on your army, they're gonna be very, very, very tanky. Oh, he needs to be careful. Actually not. I mean, the damage output from those crossbow men and Lourdes even is not that great. Oh, he has now upgrades on his army though. Yeah, he has level level 3 forge works, Mithril Mail and the Forge Blades purchase, man. And just like in the last game, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be very, very, very hard. And yeah, we have seen in the last game, even Mirkwoods, aka the strongest archers in the game, struggle to deal enough damage to the upgraded guardians. And crossbow men are way weaker than Mirkwoods. So I think those guardians are gonna stand there and tank the damage like a man. Lords might potentially be able to do something with the carnage, but besides the carnage, his normal auto attacks are not gonna hurt those guardians anymore. Um, and also this game, Andy San didn't go for a single hero. So last game, remember, he was going for the King Brent and Gloin. This game, he's playing without a single hero all game long. Siege Works is coming up. Um, hmm, I don't know about Siege Works. Maybe you can make an explosive mine in the army and then kill everything. <laughs> Maybe that's the way to go. I don't know what is he planning to do. Uh, wagons are taking care of those work riders. Not a big deal. And this game number two is also looking very good. For the dwarven player and his son. He's going for a for a ballista expansion, and again, you know, why don't you buy upgrade on your fortress? It's not very expensive for the cave pets. I mean, you know, you get much more vision control, you are able to see much more. Lord's level 5, but there is not an army to buff anymore almost. 
the Uruk pit is gonna be taken down next. Yes, another one. A level 3 furnace, which is gonna be very important to keep alive, but Andy Sun has barrage ability already. Which can be used here. To kill the expansion, to kill the army, if he wants to. But it looks like he's holding it. He doesn't want to use it just yet. He's gonna use it now. Oh yeah, the level 3 furnace has been taken down. Many, many units are down as well. He's being attacked from the other side of the map at the same time. I mean, rams are not gonna be very useful in this situation, I would say. Uh, even if you sneak one of them to the side of the Dwarven player, you can always... It's like multiple level 3 structures around this area, right? So your ram is gonna need a lot of time to take down single one of them. Um, full command points now for a while against 375. And I, ke I kept saying that already in the in the last streams we had uh, dwarves against any matchup. You know, you don't want to be defending yourself exclusively against dwarves. That's not going to work. You need to kind of attack and pressure a little bit. Because Anisan has a very aggressive playstyle. He attacks you from both sides at once, which is hard to deal with, yes. But at the same time, he is vulnerable. He has nothing to defend himself. But yet, he didn't lose a single mineshaft. Which means he had, he had so much money that losing those units doesn't matter at this point. And because you are playing like a turtle, you know, like only around your own fortress, he has the full map under his control, almost unlimited amount of resource income. And then it's gonna be very hard. Even if you turn a fight in your favor, you don't have any follow-up later on. And he has so much money he can replace his army very quickly because he has also three all of warriors and a level three forge works hinted land was used from isengard hinted land is a little bit different than from the goblins and from the um than from the goblins and mordor because on the taint on the tainted land from isengard if you kill enemy units you get also money it's like a pillage ability right from lures level eight for example he's level six almost wildman is gonna be ready but that's what i said before those guardians they are very very tanky and Lourdes needs to hit them like eight times to kill one of them Wildman of Dun Lan Dunland will be summoned now defensively and he's actually just using everything pretty much for defensive purposes you know and Tainted Land on cooldown Wildman of, Co Wildman of Dunland on cooldown not that many units left anymore a ram he's here question mark uh, gonna use war chant even because the units they don't die at this point they are so tanky Lords is level 6, but at the same time, he's gonna get attacked from other sides of the map. Uh, did he go for the siege weapons? Nope, he didn't. Um, but he doesn't need to at this point, right? Because those guardians, they are so tanky. Valinko was used, and they have forged blades, which means they are dealing incredible amount of damage. Look at this. They killed every single man of uh, white man of Dunland from the summon, killed the army, killed the furnace, and they are still alive upgrades man i was at some point i was always doubting the upgrades in rise of the witch king i take it back i mean they have actually so much value in the mid to late game the furnace is gonna be taken down within seconds 350 command point it's gonna be now 250 only after losing this level 3 furnace i mean he went for the Wildman and the tainted land uh, devastation could be a better choice indica is gonna call it gg and in this run with a clean 2-0 victory Finishes the group stage of World Championship first. Four wins, one lose.